But then I'd have to explain to the producer that I wasn't done with the site because I got scared. And she was sure to tell everyone else and I'd be laughed out of the office. I flipped the light switch at the restroom there in the hall and went back in. The men's room was about the size of two of our cubicles and even grungier than the alley back behind the office. There were two stalls, a pair of urinals, and a trio of sinks with a wall-length mirror. I hated the urinals because one was right by the door and I felt like people passing by could see in while I went. The other was made for a midget. Even though I was alone, I went and sat down in the stool. I also just felt the need to sit and relax a moment. I was just beginning to relax when I heard the door creak again, followed by footsteps on the tiles. I was relieved by that sound because it meant I wasn't alone. Someone else had come in, and all that sudden fear was just me being irrational. I cleared my throat, a tradition I do sort of to say, this stall is occupied. The moment I made the sound, the footsteps stopped. I suddenly felt a little anxious again. I cleared my throat a little less obviously, to make it seem like an introduction, and more like I had just had a bit of congestion. The footsteps suddenly began to get closer. When it sounded like they were right outside my stool, they came to a stop. I got real tense and leaned down to look at the person's shoes. There weren't any. At that moment, I got goosebumps on my arms and my heart rose up into my throat. My stomach was doing cartwheels, but I went about the routine of finishing up, flushing, and opening the stall door. The room was empty. I went over to the sink and began washing my hands, constantly looking over my shoulder and around the room in the mirror. I went to the hand dryer and started it up and was rubbing my hands together when I heard another sound right behind me. I could see in the reflective chrome of the dryer nozzle. The other stool door was shut where before it had been wide open. At that point I didn't care whether my hands were wet or not. I wiped them on my pants and turned for the door out of that room. The whole space felt smaller, more confined. As I walked past the stools, I heard the click of the lock and the stool door started swinging open as if to greet me. I didn't look in. I didn't want to see even if there was somebody in there. I just ran the last few feet, yanked the door open as hard as I could, and bolted down the dark hall back to the safety of my computer. When I got back to the desk, my phone was off the hook again. I could hear someone speaking, even before I picked it up. I put it to my ear and listened. At the tone, it would be 7.43. I held the phone there, listening for the mentioned tone. I turned and watched the hallway I had just come from, though from my desk I couldn't see down it. There were no other sounds except the hiss of the radiator and the computer fan. The recorded voice played again, but this time it was different. It sounded like one of those old cassette tape players when you only held the play button halfway down. It was deeper and slower, and I did not feel any comfort in it anymore. At the tone, it would be 7.43. I hung up. At that point, I decided that I did not want to be there, and I didn't care if I got laughed at later for it. I grabbed my satchel and saved my work. Just as I told Windows to shut down, the phone rang. Instinctively, I picked it up, figuring it was the producer calling. I'd just tell her I'd come in tomorrow and finish it. That's what I'd do. At the tone, it would be 7.45. Send the voice. I hung up and pulled the cord out. The phone at the desk next to mine rang. I ignored it and grabbed my shit to get the fuck out of there. I decided as I walked that my best course of action was to go into the kitchen, walk the long hallway to the front desk and wait for the elevator. Then I remembered that I had to set the alarm. The alarm pad was past the elevator, around the corner, and back by the executive offices. Not a big problem, I thought. As I walked past the dark hall toward the kitchen, I looked down it just to make myself feel better. The door to the men's room was wide open. Worse, it was pitch black inside again, but I realized as I stopped and looked that I had never turned it off. The linchpin in my horror came when the door suddenly began to slowly shut, as if it had been waiting for me as an audience before doing so. I turned away and went into the kitchen, trying not to think about the fact that the men's room was just on the other side of the wall from the hallway I was about to go down. 
I looked down the hall at the front desk and the elevator out of there that had never seemed so far away before. I took a step and from behind came another sound that sent shivers down my spine. The crash bar and the fire escape being pushed. I turned 180. The fire escape was located right next to the director's office and was just about two rows of cubicles away from the kitchen area. As I watched, the door to the fire stairs down the back of the building swung slowly open into the darkness. I turned back toward the hall and ran. The sound of a ding indicated the arrival of the freight elevator, and as I passed it, its door slowly began to open, just like the stall door in the bathroom. I heard the sound of rattling chains from inside, but I did not look. I was running, running for that front desk, running for the elevator down to the lobby. When I got there, I slammed into the wall between the elevator doors and punched at the down button desperately. I turned back to look where I came from. Every time I do, I think of Lot's wife in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. You never fucking look back. Ever. The back area of the office was bathed in darkness. I could not see it at all. There was some light coming into the kitchen from the developer area, but even as I stood there watching, it seemed to fade and become dark. I looked at the elevator floor indicator and prayed that the approaching car was brightly illuminated. Two, three, four. The ding of its arrival was beautiful. The doors opened to a well-lit salvation. I scrambled into the elevator and frantically hammered at the ground floor button. As the doors slowly started closing, I watched the encroaching darkness seem to swallow the office. When the car reached the ground floor, I was squashed down into the corner, terrified that it would at any moment fill the compartment and eat me. I bolted through the lobby and out into the street where I promptly threw up, grossing out a passing cyclist who yelled words of encouragement as he continued down the street. I did not return to the office the next day. I told the producer I had gotten violently sick, and she talked the client into extending the deadline. I got chastised for forgetting to set the alarm, but no harm was done. Three months later, they reorganized the back area of the office, built the subordinates office, tore down a wall between our section and the kitchen, and set the cubicles up in a more standard format, moving me from my little corner by the dark hallway. I never went down that hallway again. In the remaining year that I was there, if I had to go, I walked down to the front desk and took the elevator down a floor where there was a public access restroom. Much bigger, much cleaner, much brighter, and far less haunted.